welcome back to my channel so in today's watch me work i have this valentine set this client y'all y'all know her her nails are got have gotten so long she chose not to cut them this time so they're real curvy and long and we have this valentine set we took probably too many hours on trying to figure out um this is her previous set grown out she has all her crystals and like 99 percent of her beads which I'm cool with. I'm glad that the beads last to any degree. Um, they really make it look super cute. And many years ago, when I first became a nail tech, I could not figure out how to make them last. But um, because I always thought it, it made the look so cute. And then when crystal gel became a thing, I um, was so happy. And that's why I do so many beaded looks because I've wanted to for so long, but they would never last. Anyways. So I'm taking off her previous design, of course, and I'm just showing you guys this crazy mellow yellow bit from Atwood. It's such a big bit. It's great for taking down gel polish. I wouldn't take it down from the natural nail at all, but um, like just taking the gel polish off the surface of your enhancement, it's really good for that. It cuts through it real smooth. You could also take down the nail, probably not a I mean, you could do it. It probably is not the most efficient for like acrylic, for builder gel. It could take it down some, especially a little bit of debulking. It's probably not the bit I would use to completely take down an enhancement. So next I'm using the skiver bit from Atwood Industries. This bit is a diamond bit. And that means that it has texture similar to a sanding band. Um, it's just a grit, so you can use it forward and backwards. So if you're left-handed, you don't need a special bit. And also, no matter which hand you use, you can go ahead and forward and reverse just to get different angles on the nail and the cuticle on the nail plate. You want to make sure you use this bit flush to the nail and on a lower speed. This is safe for the nail plate. You just have to use it correctly and not dig in to um, the nail. Next, I'm using the round bit. This is the same, it's a diamond bit. I use it on a low speed, usually a little faster than my skiver though. And I'm just removing all that dead skin and just buffing any calluses away. This, please don't use this to remove the cuticle from the nail plate just because of how it's curved. It can cause an indentation because it's curved the opposite way of the nail plate. So next I'm using the Red Baron bit from Atwood Industries and I'm using this on the highest speed my e-file will go. And the e-file I'm using is the Melody Susie Sparkle. It's the rechargeable e-file. I did a review on that and I'll put a link below. It's more affordable um, of an e-file than some, you know, like your Koopas or your Medicools. Um, but it's worked very well for me. I've been using it probably four or five months now, five months. Um, so definitely recommend. Anyways, so I use that aggressive bit to take the product down a whole bunch. Now I'm using this coarse bit. It's still coarse bit, but it's not as aggressive as the Red Baron. And I'm getting even more product off and I'm getting closer to the nail plate without digging into it. So then I'm taking the diamond um, cross cut bit and I'm going even lower so I'm able to go lightly over the nail plate with the diamond bit and there's still product left I didn't need to take it 100% down I just needed to debulk it because we're doing glitter and a bling so um, I just cleanse the nail off dusted it cleanse it off with acetone just to dehydrate and um, balance the nail plate before we apply our clear rubber base and this is from the gel bottle ink and I'm just applying it over the natural nail you can apply it over previous enhancement um i just generally don't just because it's a waste of product um and i'm using the ibd clear hard gel today and this is the glitter i'm going to be putting in the nail please don't gasp i am encapsulating soft gel or gel polish into our enhancement today so yes and i've done it multiple times without any issue so I'm taking this pinky, it's gonna be full bling, so I want a coordinating glitter as a base. I didn't wanna use a polish on top of the nail because I felt like it could make it bulky. We don't wanna bulk out our bling nails. We wanna keep them as tight and in shape as possible. So I knew this glitter is chunky. So me putting it on the surface of the nail, I would probably need two coats to get some good opacity. And 
it's just a chunkier glitter then I have to worry about filing down the sides and that's going to remove some of my color and that's not what I'm wanting to do I want this really deep in the nail and um also so I can shape it and make this nail narrow for our bling so I'm just applying the polish now I'm not building with this polish I'm just putting enough to get the opacity that I need and then um, I'm curing it. I would end up applying two layers and I cure it in between each layer and I'm just getting it as nice and clean around the cuticle area as possible. Then I'll cure and then go ahead and encapsulate. So I'm just showing you guys me refilling um, the other nails for a second. There's not much. I'm just applying a little slip layer. As you can see, Builder Gel is so easy. I always tell people if you can polish, you can do Builder Gel. It's really true. It works out itself it self levels um you can get different consistencies you don't have to worry about powder to liquid ratio just whatever consistency works best for you that's really it in a you know good brand um so you can see i just applied a slip layer a little bead at the back and just kind of spread it down now i wiped the sticky layer off this because i just wanted to go ahead and shape it and clean it up a little bit before i encapsulated it Again, I'm trying to keep this nail, you know, nice and narrow and neat. And I wanted to make sure I got the shape now before I had to file into it a lot and potentially remove the color from the side because that's not what I'm trying to do. So you can see I just applied a slip layer, which it's a wet layer. You don't cure it. And then you apply a bigger bead to that. And that just makes it where it all self levels. It knows where to go. It help guides it because it's just this wet, slippery layer and your bigger bead knows where to go. And you can see this looks aggressive and fast. I'm just using the very tip of the brush just to move that product around because it just self levels so nicely. This is the IBD, this one I'm using is a little bit of a thicker one. It doesn't self level as quick. So if you're scared about that, I don't like them too runny anyways. I could probably have this a little bit thinner, honestly. But overall, I think it's a really good consistency and it's easier to get than probably a lot of light elegance products. I think you have to have a license. So if you're trying it out, uh, just make sure you purchase from a reputable brand. So you can see, I'm just looking at this from different angles and you see I apply that bead and it just kind of settles in. You can't see this line of product. It just levels on out. So I just cured that. I did shape off camera like I always do. It's because I turn the hands around. It's hard to film, especially without capturing people's faces. You know, nobody wants to be on camera anyways. So I um, am debulking the nail, especially towards the um, free edge area because we did a fill. Her nails have grown out so long, so they're so top heavy. So I'm using um, the fine grit carbide bit. I generally don't because it takes down product so fast, but because I want to do some debulking on certain nails, I'm just going to go ahead and use it. Um, just to help rebalance everything out. Well, afterward, I'm going to use, well, you can see I'm using the crosscut bit. This is from Atwood Industries. It's a diamond grip bit. It's safe for the nail plate on low speed and at the right angles. And it's also great um, for finish filing the nail, just smoothing out any inconsistencies the carbine may have left, but also I use it in place of using a hand buffer because it leaves a very fine grit on the nail. That's a great surface. Um, it smooths it out so there's no lumps and bumps, but it also adds a texture to it so our top coat or gel polish can hold on to. So I'm using... Um, the red crystals, the red crystal edge pixies from Swarovski, um, crystal gel from Nail Supply Glamour, and a mix of these Valentine, it's a Valentine um, Swarovski um, little mix from Daily Charm, and you can use code Tabitha if you're interested in that. It's a cute little mix. It has little stars and stuff. They're all bling and different colors of pinks and clear and AB. Yeah. So you can see I'm using this crystal gel again. It's from Nail Supply Glamour and I'm just squeezing it onto the nail. This is our full bling and I'm just using a gel brush to spread that out. I want a good amount of product. So I'm really kind of putting it on here. It does not. It's not really runny. The crystals will kind of move if you get it thick, which I did, but it's not. You can see it's not literally running off the nail. It just kind of gets heavy, especially at the tip. Just gravity kind of pulling it down as I'm working. And you'll see the stones kind of slide down the tip, but it's not crazy. It doesn't bother me. If I'm not doing a full bling where it's taking me so much time, this really isn't 
an issue at all. And you can see I'm going in, I'm adding those little pixies in between spaces and gaps just to make it look really, really full. And just all throughout the nail, through the center, just, just filling in little spaces. Now, again, I want to keep this narrow. The silhouette is what matters to me most. And it was too bulky at the tip. So you can see I kicked those stones off. I'm trying to keep this looking like a nice stiletto with bling. So many times you'll see these super bulky bling nails and that's not what I'm going for. So I like to keep it nice and tight. So once I got it how I wanted it, I went ahead and cured it in the light and I'm moving forward and polishing the nude on our, our other nails. Now, um, you see I'm using number 102 from Presto. It's such a beautiful nude. It's a great sheer nude. We end up putting two coats of it. Now, you guys know I usually use Cosmetic Pink, which you can see under there that I'm polishing over as the base. It's from Light Elegance. It's their uh, builder gel. But unfortunately, I had run out. I thought I had more and some was on the way. That's why we did the fill with the clear. And that's why we're using this nude. I end up really liking this nude and so did she. It just adds an extra step, really. I mean, it's a different shade and tone. And, um, you know, now I have to polish instead of just using our enhancement as a nail bed color, as we generally do. It's a beautiful nude. Well, this is the base color for all the other remaining nails and designs. Um, only the pinky had the full bling on one of the hands. So this design took us so long and you're, you guys are probably like, well, I don't even know. But my client, y'all put so much pressure on her and her plain Christmas set. And somebody or a couple of y'all were saying, we are looking forward to what you do on Valentine's Day. And she felt so much pressure and so did I. <laughs> we probably took, ooh, I don't even want to tell y'all, honestly, how long it took for us to just come up with this. So I really hope you do and enjoy. It has a few different, you know, little techniques, but I just want to share with you guys the behind the scenes. There's a lot of love and thought that went behind this. <laughs> so we just came up with it together with a little bit of inspiration pics um, that we found just, you know, on Google or whatever. So you can see I'm making these red hearts. I'm using the daughter tool and just kind of pulling down to connect for the bottom of that heart and taking a little striper brush just to create the point and give it a little more definition and clean it up. Hearts are not my thing with drawing, so that's the best way I know how to do them and make them look nice. Um, and next I'm going in and I'm drawing our French on. Now, if I could have changed anything about me doing this, I wish I would have filed my shape um, back before I did this just because I added two coats of nude polish. So I wish I would have went in and regained my stiletto or coffin shape a little bit more before I did this. Overall, it doesn't look bad, but I can see, you know, where I'm like, dang, I wish I would have done that just to help refine the look even more. So I'm just going in. I'm working from the left to the right. I do turn her hand around. Um, again, I don't capture that on camera, but I always turn the hand around just to make sure it looks, you know, as even and straight as possible. And I'm comparing one nail to the other just to show you guys, you know, what I do to help kind of give it a more even look. Even though the nails are also two different shapes, I want them to look, you know, similar. Um, so next I'm going back to the ones with the hearts and I'm using that chunky red glitter, the one we put inside of the pinky nail for their bling nail. And this is a base for our crystals. I just wanted a chunkier glitter. Oh, and I'm sorry, the red that I'm using for her French in the base of these hearts, it's not made, it's from finger paints and I don't think they make this brand either more anymore. Um, if they do, or if I can find it, I think it like rubbed off the bottle. Anyways, excuses, excuses. If I find it, I'll put it down below. But the chunky glitter red is the one from Madam Glam. You can always use code Tabitha for 30% off also. So I'm just, I put that crystal gel in the heart from Nail Supply Glamour. And now I'm putting my red stones in those red pixies as well, just to fill in those little spaces. Cause this is such a tiny space. So you can see I'm filling it in, getting it how I want, making sure I blend out that little streak because we don't want to cure it. want to cure in any, you know, lumps and bumps on the nail. So next I'm just wiping them off after I cured everything. I um just wiped it off because I knew I was going to be doing, I thought hearts at first. I was going to be doing them like polka dots in a way. 
Um, I didn't want it to spread with any inhibition layer, so I just wiped it off first. I ended up not doing this at all because I realized I'm going to have to make these hearts real identical to get the look that I wanted. And her nails are so long. It was so much to... And I was like, we're going to do polka dots. She wanted to do a polka dot pattern. We were looking at other designs earlier. Um, There's like a foil. So I was like, I'm going to just do polka dots and that'll make the heart stick out anymore, even more. So it's supposed to be like, it's a, you know, just a nude and white polka dot nail. And it's just a little heart charm kind of, you know, stuck on there, whichever way. We came up with that and it's our thing. <laughs> so I'm just using the dotting tool and some white gel. Um, I think I'm using Perfect White from Madame Glam. And I'm just dotting it on there and curing it. And that's really the end of that. So um, next I'm going to go in and seal around our um, crystals. I'm using the two-in-one sealer from Daily Charm. You can use a fine detail brush in your favorite no white top coat. Having one with a sticky layer is not really going to work going in between stones and having to wipe that off. I'm also going to seal around our hearts. Um, just seal in between the crystals and just around it because we're going to go ahead and make the nails matte. So I'm using the velvet matte from Daily Charm. As always, you can use code Tabitha. Um, for 10% off when you purchase, you know, and it's plenty. I really love this matte top coat. Um, you see, I've used it a lot lately. I do want to try some others. I want to try the one y'all told me that doesn't stain. So I got to remember to buy that. So I'm just going around the heart. I wanted the heart to stick out and be sparkly red and everything else to be matte. So I just went around the heart with the matte top coat so that it could stay shiny and just cured that. So next I'm moving on to these kind of drippy bling nails which I really really love this look um we've seen an inspiration picture and I'm so sorry I don't even know where it's from if I find it I'll try but you know you guys know I probably won't <laughs> so I just put a cluster of crystals um and that's why I use that little mix pack and from Daily Charm and I'm just kind of using the colors that you know we decided and I just Threw the crystals up there, some white opal I added, um, make sure I had some of the red so it all kind of, you know, tied in. And I'm using silver uh, micro beads or bullion beads, caviar beads, whatever you want to call them. I um, am just taking a line of those and pulling it down, adding crystal, straight line, and ending with another crystal. You can use the little um, teardrop shape, raindrop shape also with this that'll give it a cute look um but we did this <laughs> so i'm just filling in all that space in between those crystals with the beads just giving it a really full look and the thing is you want to kind of perfect your beads make them as straight as possible and then cure it once you get it how you like it and i even now i'm like dang i could have moved that bead over a little bit i could have moved that bead over but y'all know me there's always you know you always see it at the end. So you can see I'm just straightening up those beads. And um, I just added that cute little white oval. Oh, I love these. And um, I feel, you know, kind of her curve kind of, not that it takes away from it, but it the drip kind of looks different because her nails are so curved. These are her natural nails. If you guys don't know, if you're new here, these are her natural nails with the overlay. Natural nails curve and twist and do crazy stuff so that's why they look like that and just let's have some natural curve appreciation this nail is probably her craziest y'all give her a hard time this nail we know she has not corrected it but she's thinking next time she might we might cut it off and sculpt it back out straight but it just grows like that you guys i promise so you see i added that last little charm i added some clusters to her pinky and thumb it was just a little cluster. didn't record it. I'm sorry. I sealed around all the crystals. I always polish over the beads so they don't tarnish. And this is our final look. Oh my God, that red pinky bling nail. I don't even like red, but I love that. Anyways, you guys, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, um, ring the bell so you know when I post and um, comment. Let me know what you're trying to see. And I really appreciate you guys. Bye.